All right, time to get into SQL structured query language. So this is a fundamental tool. It's how we communicate with databases. It's how we pull information from databases. It's also sometimes how we alter databases. We've made this a separate module, but here's the deal. You fall into one of two groups. Either you're one of those people who have great familiarity with SQL, maybe you even have some real world experience using it. And if that's the case, we recommend just checking out the study guide or quickly breezing through the videos just as a quick review, then moving on. However, we also recognize that some of you have either never heard of SQL or it's been quite a few years since you've taken a class that may have covered it. If you're one of this group, please thoroughly review this module. There's a lot to cover here, but hopefully with the multiple choice and these videos, you can confidently walk into testing center and be a SQL pro. Here's our mental map. We're going to start out with commands, move on to clauses, then go to operators and wrap up with functions. Now I know this looks like a lot, but we're going to go step by step, make sure we understand each one of these items. All right, so we're going to go over some commands first. The key SQL commands you got to know are select, insert, update, delete, and create. So select is the command you'll probably use most frequently. It allows you to select data from a database retrieving information from one or more tables. The basic syntax for the select command is select column name from table name. So if we wanted to select all names from a student's table, we would use select name from students. This command is the cornerstone of any data retrieval operation. The insert command allows you to insert data into a table. Suppose you've just registered a new student and you want to insert their data into the students table. If you want to do that via SQL, you'd put insert into students, name, age, values, John 22. This command adds a new row into the students table with the name John and the age 22. And you can see here, the name column is referenced John and the age column is referenced 22. Next up, we have the update command. The update command allows you to modify existing data within a table. Let's say John, the student we just inserted, has had a birthday and we need to update his age in the database. We could use the command update students set age equals 23 where name equals John. This would change John's age from 22 to 23 in the student's table. The where clause we're going to be covering later. You just need to know the update command it uses this update, the column name, and then set. The delete command is a powerful one, and hence one to be used very carefully. It allows you to delete data from a table. If for some reason we needed to remove John from the students table, we could use delete from students where name equals John. This would remove the row containing John's information from the table. Lastly, we have the create command, which is used to create a new table. If we were setting up a new database for a school, we might need to create a new students table. To do this, we could use create table students name varcar20 age integer. This creates a new table called students with two columns name and age. And it also specifies what type those fields are. So age is an integer and name is varcar, which just means any character that's a string. And then also 20 is the size. So we can't have a name more than 20 characters long. All right, that wraps up the commands. Let's keep moving on to clauses. All right, let's talk about clauses. So clauses are used to refine our commands, starting off with the where clause. So the where clause is used to filter records that fulfill a specified condition. So if we want to select all students older than 20, we would use this SQL statement. So notice that we use the where age is greater than 20. We're going to be talking about the greater than operator in another video. But the key thing here is we use where. This filters out the results. So we're still selecting all fields from the table students, but we filter out with where. All right, moving on to group by. So group by groups rows that have the same values in specified columns and aggregated data. 
If you're familiar with Excel, this is kind of like a pivot table, but for SQL. So it's often used with aggregate functions like count, max, min, sum, or average, all that we're going to be talking about later, to group the result set by one or more columns. For instance, if we use the command on the screen, what this is saying is that we are grouping a list of different ages and the number of students who are of each age. So the result would look like this. All right, so next we have the having clause. This is used to filter the results of a group by operation. So it's similar to where, but it operates on group data. So just in your mind, having has to go with group by. So for instance, the command on the screen would only show the ages that appear more than five times in the student's table. So it would actually filter out and the results would look like this. All right, finally we have the order by clause. This is used to sort the result set in ascending or descending order. So you have ASC or DSC. For example, the command on the screen would return a list of all students sorted by age in descending order. All right, so now moving on to join clauses. So we're going to talk about inner joins, left joins, right joins, and full joins. Join is a method to combine rows from two or more tables based on a related column between them. Let's talk about inner join first. So the inner join keyword selects records that have matching values in both tables. So it combines rows from two or more tables based on a related column. Here's an example. Assume we have two tables, students and courses. Students contain student data like student ID and name. Courses contains data like course ID, course name, and student ID. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on. The classes table is not normalized, and that's true. This is just a simple example to get the concept of joins across. Well, if we want to find out which student is enrolled in which course, we can use an inner join. And that statement would be the one you see on the screen. So a couple things to note here. This command would return a list of students along with the courses they're enrolled in, but only for those students who are enrolled in at least one course. Why is that? Well, because it's an inner join. Everything has to have a match in the other table. So here, if the student is not enrolled in any courses, they're not gonna appear. Likewise, if the course doesn't have any students, it's also not going to appear. So that's an inner join. Moving on to a left join. So this type of join returns all records from the left table and the matched records from the right table. If no match is found, the result is null on the right side. So we're using the same students and courses table. If we want to get a list of all students in the courses they're enrolled in, including students who are not enrolled in any course, we can use a left join. And that's shown here along with the results. Similarly, a right join, otherwise known as a right outer join, returns all records from the right table and the matched records from the left table. And again, if no match is found, the result is null on the left side. It just shows null. So here is the result and the statement for that. A full join or a full outer join returns all records when there is a match in either the left or the right table. This means that if the on clause matches zero records in the right table, the join still returns a row in the result, but with null in each column from the right table. All right, so that wraps up our clauses.